Today's episode is sponsored by Ticket by Cyrus, and Ticket is the leading Microsoft-aligned IT service management platform built for Microsoft Teams. Visit ticket.ai and try it today for free. In today's episode, I'm checking out what's new and cool in Microsoft Entra ID. So if you want to keep your skills updated, stay tuned. This is a good one. Hi everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and I really do appreciate you dropping by. On today's episode, I'm checking out what's new and cool in Entra ID. Every time I take a look at Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Entra, there's definitely something new and it's super important that you keep your skills up to date. So in this episode, stay tuned because there's some really important nuggets, especially if you're not just an administrator, but also if you're preparing for a Microsoft exam as well. Now, just a reminder, if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below. And if you've not subscribed, we'd love you to come on board. So click on that subscribe button and come and join my learning community. And I got to say, by the way, I've just hit 150,000. I got to take my hat off to you. I really do appreciate uh, all of your support. So thanks so much uh, for that. So I think it's about time we jump in and take a look at what's new and cool in Microsoft Entra ID. Are you ready to learn? Firstly, the subject of editing multiple users. I'm here in Microsoft 365, as you can see, and I'm going to select three users here. Um, up on the menu here, you'll see that I've got a little ellipse. And if you go into the ellipse, one of the features is that you can, you see you've got three selected users, so I can uh, manage the group memberships of that. I can also edit the contact information for all of these users. So for example, if I want to make them in, give them you know, access to the sales team, if I want to um, uh, add a city for these three users, you can do that here. So for example, if they were in Oslo, I can go in, I can say, hey, you know, I want all of these users uh, to be uh, in Oslo. And once I've done that, it then, uh, if I just close that down. Now, if I go into Adele's contact information, uh, which you can find here on that tab, so I'm just going to click on manage contact information, you can now see, indeed, it now says Oslo. So you could always kind of edit you know, it was kind of limited though what you could do. So we flip that now into Enter ID and brand new, and it's now in public preview, is the ability to edit multiple users here in Enter ID. So I can simply select again three or four users, or indeed you can select all your users. And we have a new menu up here that says Edit. And you can click on the drop down arrow and you can now say, hey, I want to edit the properties, add a manager for these, add a sponsor, of course, which is the guest sponsors, add these users to a group, uh, add to an admin unit. Uh, we can view the account status and you can also review the uh, revoke the sessions of those users as well. So what I'm going to do here is again, I'm just going to select, let's say, Alex. I'll select Cameron and I'm going to select Christy. Again, edit that preview and I'm going to add these users to a group. And you can see it now says, OK, which group do you want them to be a member of? So again, I'm just going to scroll down. And I'm going to say, you know, I want them to be a member of, let's say, the um, Trondheim. So I'm in Norway this week, so they're going to be in the Trondheim uh, HQ team. And I've now added those users to that group. So very, very cool. I really like this feature. And again, this is always something we could do in Active Directory. So it's really nice to see this included now in Enter ID. So there you have it. Now in public preview is the ability to edit multiple users. Okay, so for my number two, I'm going to come back here into Enter ID. I'm going to click on the protection tab and I'm going to scroll down to authentication methods. So of course, we currently have some great authentication methods here in Enter ID. 
uh, FIDO2 keys, which of course are those physical keys. And we've also got uh, pass keys, which will all likewise uh, sync to mobile devices, for example. Uh, we've got things like the Authenticator app. You've got things like TAP or temporary access passes, which are great for new members of staff or if a user has simply forgotten their password, this can be useful. Um, we can also do certificate-based authentication, which is really super useful, particularly if you're using corporate devices. But you'll notice here we also have another new feature here now. This is QR code authentication. So I simply need to uh, switch this feature on, and you can select which users you want to make this available to use. Then we just go ahead and essentially configure it, and you can basically choose the QR pin length here uh, for the users to choose. And again, this can be anything from eight characters right up to 20 characters there, which they may not thank you for, by the way. Uh, you can also specify the lifetime of a standard QR code. So again, by default, this is actually set to a year. But again, for security reasons, of course, you may want to bring that down a little bit. So once you've switched this on, uh, I just simply click on save, and that's it now uh, actually set up. Now, just to remind you that this is currently in public preview, and the obvious question is, well, Andy, who on earth would use this? Well, if you're on an F plan or one of Microsoft 365's kiosk plans, then you might work on a shared environment, you might work in a call center, a library, a nurse's station, something like that. And this is where this is particularly useful. So uh, as a user, I can come back into all users here, and I can say, let's select uh, Alan's account. So if I go into Alan's account here, um, I can obviously go in and have a look at his account. I can, obviously, you've got, re you know, resetting his passwords and things like that. But the other thing that you might want to do is you might want to uh, control how Alan actually signs in. And for that, we simply come into authentication methods down at the bottom here. And you can see that just once this comes in, um, we can now add in an authentication method. So I can say, okay, which authentication method do I want to make available to Alan? So email and phone number are probably not a good, uh, a good idea, um, but QR code, definitely. So we can come in here and we can basically say, hey, do you want to set an expiry date? And that's the 12 months from today uh, that we just put in. When do we want to activate it? Do we want to activate it now or at a later time? And you can specify that time. And also, does he require a pin? So again, I can put in a, a eight digit pin uh, and I can just, I'm just going to put it in here. Uh, very simple. And you can also generate a pin uh, for that user as well. Uh, and you can see it gives you a number of rules. Pins can only contain numbers. The value must not be empty. I can also generate a pin for Alan as well. So you can see it's now generated. Now, super important, by the way, don't lose that. He will definitely need that pin in order to use the account. So again, super important. And again, I'm just going to click on add and you can now see that I've added that authentication method in. So you can now see that the QR code has now been generated along with the PIN code. Alan can now go ahead and you can now provide him with that downloaded image uh, so he can access uh, his environment. So there you have it. Currently in public preview, the QR code authentication. Really nice. I love it. Okay, so for my number three, I'm going to come back into the protection blade. And this time, I'm going to bring you down uh, and we're going to have a look at authentication methods. Now, just to mention one thing about authentication methods, um, you can come in here. And of course, as I mentioned, we have all of these authentication methods here. You will notice that we have a new feature on the top here, add external method, which is currently in public preview. And what this does is this provides you the details of, let's say, a, a third party vendor. So the vendor with the client software ID, you would need, they would typically provide you with the discovery endpoint and the application ID. So this is great if you're trying to authenticate using a particular third app. 
But once you've got that details or those details from the provider, of course, you can then target this to either all users or specific selected users within the organization who are using the vendor's software. So add external method, really nice feature there. Now, um, on the subject of authentication methods, I'm going to come back down here and password reset has been in Windows for many, many years, of course, and it's also been in um, Microsoft Azure for a long time as well. So the whole idea of this is that self-service password reset is exactly as it says on the tin. I go and reset my cloud password and it resets it back to the on-premises solution. Now, by default, you can switch this off. You can have it just for selected users. And you can see that the users would have to be a member of the SSPR security group. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could also switch it to all. So basically all users. So once that's been saved, we can then go back into authentication methods. And you can see that we have a number of uh, methods available to the users. Now, as you saw, my options disappeared because I've actually enforced a more restrictive policy. Now, the problem with, of course, authentication methods is that, you know, this is the worst thing that it could kind of fall back on a security question. So if somebody's done social engineering, this, uh, again, I'm not happy about this, but as I said, you could have additional uh, safeguards in there as well. For example, MFA or something like that. Um, so once you've done that, uh, we've set the authentication methods, of course, then you can specify how the users are going to register for self-service uh, password reset. So are you going to say, yeah, let users register for it? And this is on by default, number of days before the users are asked to reconfirm their information. Again, that's set essentially to six months. You can switch on notifications. And again, you can also customize. So for example, during the authentication process, you can put in a custom help desk or email link there. Um, so you might have a phone number that they can call for uh, assistance. Um, you can also create an administrator policy as well for passwords. Again, here you can see I can go in there, um, but again, passwords, I'm just going to kind of leave that as it is at the moment. I'm, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, this is not one of my favorite authentication methods. I always see this as a potential backdoor into a company. So I'm not a fan of anything to do with passwords, but I do appreciate that, you know, many of you actually use this. One thing that we also have, which is now in currently public preview, is the new audit log feature here. And this is something that customers have been asking for for a while. So as I said, you can see that I've gone and generated some audit logs or audit activities, and these will appear in the sign-in log in Entra ID. And that's just, um, th there you go, that's just me adding uh, some of those policy settings there. Okay, so finally, just clicking on this one, the usage and insights. We've had this for quite some time, and this just shows me, you know, how many users are capable of doing a password reset, how many users are capable of doing a, a multi-factor authentication, and this is really useful. I can click in here, and you can see here the, the details on how many users have actually taken advantage of that feature. This could be quite useful in, obviously, get pushing out that message of better security. So this is really useful here. Now, just while we're talking about passwords here, one interesting feature, if you've got a P2 license, of course, you also get identity protection here. And this is where I spoke about this in the past, where you can have a risky uh, user report. So if you've got things like a user risk policy or a sign-in risk policy for your users, then again, this the risky users will give you that risky user report. The other thing that we've also got here is the settings, and this can be really useful if you are using self-service password reset. So allow on-premises password change to reset the user risk. So this will flag this up. Um, so if you do have um, a malicious user out there who is essentially trying to get into your network, um, and again, the use self-service password reset to do that, then again, this will um, enhance that um, uh, 
uh, overall protection and again it will flag up in a report so that's a nice feature as well so there you go self-service password reset and the new auditing feature now in public preview and very quickly i just want to show you just a quick piece of nuggety news um, is the ability to uh, use an email as an alternate login ID and many companies use this and have, we've had this feature to be honest in the likes of Active Directory and Microsoft Exchange for a number of years so um, if you're in hybrid at the moment and you're running Entra ID Connect Sync then you can just simply go into the settings here in the uh, hybrid settings and there's just a little checkbox uh, there that says uh, go ahead and use Use email as an alternate login ID the, uh, on the screen there it says learn more you can click onto that link and it will take you through to a very nice document on learn.microsoft.com that will walk you through it but considering that some companies want to use an email rather than your typical or traditional UPN it's a really good solution check it out today it's available right now in public preview gosh there you go life in the cloud it's forever changing isn't it enter id uh, what's new and cool this month i really hope that you found that useful if you did uh, give me a big thumbs up it really does help the channel and of course if you've got questions and comments then uh, as always get those down below okay that's it for this time i really appreciate you dropping by you stay safe i'll see you soon Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.